Hello, did you know that we read code more times than we actually write it? Uh, let's take this code as an example. Let's say we are not developer who wrote it. And first of all, we see the endpoint. Let's say it's some express application or NestJS or something. So we have request and response object. We parse request to get first name and email, and we want to register our user with this data. So we have a register user function that takes these parameters. It does it a sync magic inside, and it returns created user. We return it instantly, and there are errors possibly. If we catch any, we send 400 status, means some validation error, and the error message will be there. Okay, so far so good, pretty simple. You saw such code multiple times already. So what's inside register user and what can be the catch of the function? What can we improve? First of all, it's a validation here and we threw an error if user is not valid. Second, we check if user with such email already exists and we threw an error if that happens. Then we have a database create user with such data and uh, it happens successfully we return the user. But the catch is we can throw a database error. And uh, well, there can be a variety of you know, server side errors that are not um, client specific ones. So clients shouldn't know about them. Uh, usually they are returned as 500 status, but we don't handle it here and we basically handle any error it can be some you know runtime error it can be server site specific error it can be register user specific error we don't know and um, that's a code that's what i call not much error typed we can do better let's look at the same code but type safe so we have endpoint typed function, which is basically the same. It uses register user typed function, which do the same thing, but instead of returning simply user, it returns an array of error and user. Error can be either sum, you see it's function specific error or null, and the user can be either user like operation successful or now. So we do some checks here like, hey, what type of the error it is? And as you can see, it has all, all the errors here have register user prefix. First one is validation. Okay, like model is not valid. We can safely return it with 400 status. We know it's validation, so it's fully safe to return message as it is. Then there is a user taken error. Well, which means, you know, email is busy or not busy taken. And we can return it with 409 conflict. So front end uh, does not rely on the string message, but it can catch this 409 and show appropriate uh, screen error for the user, you know, human friendly. And then uh, there is a database error. Something happened that we didn't predict. Maybe some, you know, foreign key is missing or uh, some constraint didn't satisfy, uh, like our data didn't satisfy the constraint. And we definitely don't want to expose this type of error to the client. It might be other kind of sensitive error and uh, we better try to catch all of them and we just send 500 and we do not expose the data to the client. Uh, you know, many times uh, some services were hacked when error messages contained information about the server. Like, let's say, what type of engine X is installed on the server? What types of the ORM is installed? And um, people who want to hack your service can use such data to find some glitches or some holes. So let's now look at the register user typed function. Here it is. And let's see what's inside. You can see basically the same feature, uh, but instead of returning a true error, we return array 
of either error, either uh, some successful user created. Uh, all first things here are error handlings and we return specific error types. And the last one is we try to write user to the database, but well, if it fails, we wrap the function into our, uh, wrap the error into our custom error and we handle it. For example, here we might uh, console error uh, if for developers for later and uh, because our custom function drops this one, we will have access to the call stack to, to all the original data. Now let's look at the types. Oh, also you can see that the return type is strictly type, typed and uh, all, all the information is here. Like return type is either this, either that. Either it is a failed operation with an error is it was successful with a created user and the user also um, union of three different errors here they are they are quite basic but you know once we define them like this we can use instance of operator that is here to distinguish them not by uh, hard coding some string of the error but rather using type so later on, let's say here you decide you want to rename it to email taken and uh, some stuff here, user, or let's say you, you want to say just simply email taken. For uh, other developers who are users of your register user function, nothing changes, basically uh, since your code was refactored, it was renamed, this error was renamed across all your code base. And for them, nothing happened there. Well, just, just error renamed, but because they don't hard code the error message and don't check the string here, nothing changed. The functionality will still work as expected. So, yeah, the benefit of this approach is you have strictly typed errors and you can expect them uh, to be thrown and uh, you can handle all the negative scenarios. You won't forget about them. Your compiler will ask you like, hey, there are possibly like one more error that it didn't handle. Might be you want to add a code for that. Or let's say GitHub Copilot, if you don't have this code, it will say like, ah, you know, there is one more error that you can handle. Well, now it knows what I what I mean here, but it will be useful. The downside of it, it's like your code is maybe two times longer. Let's compare it with the original code. Yeah, here it's shorter. But I would call this type of code a junior code. Like, you know, you, you can quickly hack it if you do something not production grade, but for some serious production running application, I would expect this type of code. It's longer, yes, but it's easy to know what function returns, what type of success or failure operation and data, and uh, you can be type safe. It will help you on the long run. Uh, if you like this video, try this technique. Let me know how it works or not works for you. Um, and uh, like this video, see you in the next one.